Welcome to the Sports Playback Highlights Show. Along with Jessica Rosales, I'm Bethel Duran. And every single week, City TV will recap Friday night's action with the big games, big plays, and even bigger highlights. Football season is here, and I'm ready, Jessica. I know, me too. Thanks, Bethel. Week one, all three schools in action. Losing your drop there, opener to east side of Palmdale, 35-7, but the big game in the area was Hawthorne and Lawndale. Two schools separated by a few miles, players that know each other well, some from their elementary days, and rivalry games, always exciting to see those. Let's go to the highlights. First quarter, Lawndale driving on the Hawthorne 32, hand off to DeAndre Shaw, cuts across the middle, shakes off a Cougar before driven out of bounds. Shaw, a real strong runner this year for the Cardinals. Next play, ball near the 20. Sophomore QB Chris Murray in the shotgun. Hands off to Davion Ward. Big hole in the middle. Lawndale on the board first. But Hawthorne answers back with senior P.J. Washington hooking up with Jermaine Martin for a 30-yard TD strike. A nice pass there. First touchdown of the season for the Cougars, and they weren't done. Washington scrambles, shows athleticism, throws across the body, finds Martin again, this time for a 20-yarder. Hawthorne's on top, 14-6, their first lead of the year. But Londell has a skilled quarterback as well. Right before the half, the Cardinals answer. Corner into the end zone, touchdown Londell. We'll go to the break with Hawthorne on top, 14-12. Second half, both teams with strong defense. Nobody scored in the third quarter, but in the fourth, Londell took control. Seven minutes to go, and the sophomore put the Cardinals on top. Murray wasn't done, takes the handoff, goes right, weaves through traffic, untouched his second rushing TD of the game, and the Cardinals take a 26-14 lead. Just when you thought it was over, it wasn't. Hawthorne has a new attitude. The Cougars under first-year head coach Pazinger has shown this team how to fight, and with backup QB in the game, Hawthorne drove the field for a touchdown, but too much Londo, the Cardinals beat Hawthorne 26 21, Lawndale now 1-1, one one. Hawthorne falls to 0-2. Despite getting the win, Coach Matheson was not too happy with the performance of his team. He credits the defense for holding it together, but knows they play better than what he saw in those first three quarters. For more, we go now to Agidio DeLieu, who caught up with Coach Matheson after the game. I'm here with the Cardinals coach. Coach, first of all, congratulations. 26-21 win here over the Hawthorne Cougars. A big win for you guys tonight in your second game. Your thoughts on tonight's game? Ugly. It was an ugly, ugly football game. Um, we're a much better team than the way we played the first three quarters. Uh, five fumbles, miscues on kickoff, miscues on PAT. Um, they found a way to win it. The defense kept us in that ball game. 26-21 um, doesn't reflect how well the defense played tonight. They got put in some bad situations, um, but uh, the only way I can describe this game is just an ugly win. I know a lot of mistakes there. Uh, fortunately for you guys, you did end up with the W. Speaking of that defense, though, your leader on defense, your senior, Ryan Alexander, talk about him a little bit in this action tonight, his, uh, his play tonight. You know, it's a, it's a, he's a super fast athlete. He plays at a high, high intensity, and sometimes it costs him to make a few mistakes here and there. But uh, he played his butt off. Um, the guys that really kept us in the game were uh, David uh, um, David Tuivai at the end and our, our three inside linebackers just flying to the ball. Um, you know, a few mistakes on defense, but that, that defense gets better and better every time they step on the field. And real quick, your quarterback Chris Murray, only a sophomore, seems like a very smart player on and off the field. And just great for you guys tonight. Talk about him a little bit. Uh, a little too smart for his own good. Um, you know, you tell these kids to do one thing and then they think about it and they overthink it. Um, I tell the boy, run the ball. He's got great feet, he's a great athlete, and he wants to sit back there and make the big throw. And you know, right now the receivers are having issues not knowing what to do on their scramble routes, and they're leaving him out to dry. He should know just to run the ball. But when he does run the ball, I mean, you see the results out there. We, we go to our heavier package there towards the end, and he's the one that punches it in the end zone. And a tough loss for first-year coach Donald Pacinger and the Cougars, but the season is still early, and he has high expectations for what this team can accomplish. Sebastian Spencer talked to Coach about his expectations and thoughts on the game against the Cardinals. Coach, how do you think your team played tonight? We played okay in some spots. We, we played terrible in other. I mean, Lawndale did everything to give us the game, and we did everything to give it back to him. So. Definitely. I know uh, one of your assistant coaches told me that you talked a lot about turnovers and capitalizing off that right. in the – in the locker room, how did you? How do you think they responded to that in the second half? 
Who, our team? My team? Uh, they, we didn't respond to it. We, we had a couple of turnovers, a couple of four, uh, fourth down stops, and didn't get anything out of it. So it was, it was, it was tough. And I also know I was over there a lot looking at your players. I know you had a lot of injuries over there, a lot of people cramping up. I know yeah. Paris McDaniel had a couple injuries to the neck. So speak about that a little bit. Yeah, we have to address that uh, tomorrow in our meetings. We just had a lot. I don't know if it was injuries or hurt. Uh, I, I have to check it out, talk to our, our trainer and see what was going on. I really don't know the whole story with all of them. And I know this is your first year yeah. at Hawthorne, and uh, you guys have a good bunch of kids here that you talked about earlier. What do you look to accomplish in this season for these kids? We're gonna keep plugging. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep working. I mean, our goal at the start of the season was to win the Ocean League title. I'm, I'm glad we got five preseason games to work on some things to get to the Ocean League. And an exciting week two coming up for high school sports. To start, 0-1 losing her travels to North Torrance to take on the Saxons. Both teams will be fighting for their first win. In our featured game of the week, the Lawndale Cardinals will be hosting the Monarchs of Morningside. Lawndale still fresh off that close win over Hawthorne, hoping to have a winning record of 2-1 by the end of the night. Should be an exciting game tonight, Beto. Well, City TV, of course, it's always exciting. And this is the sports playback highlight show. You have to read it because I'm still getting used to it. But you're going to see us every single week. For Jessica Rosales, I'm Bethel Duran. Let's go out to Hawthorne High School with our studs, Lou Stowers and Rufus Washington. Get out of here, fellas. Thanks, Beto. From Lawndale High School, we're at the Cardinal Stadium. And it is the Morningside Monarchs going to take on the Lawndale Cardinals, along with Sebastian Spencer and Rufus Washington in his 26th year. I'm Lou Stowers, thanking you for joining us on City TV in this interleague rivalry, the Morningside Monarchs and the Cardinals. And uh, always great to see the Monarchs come down. Oh, it absolutely is. This is a Ocean League Pioneer League matchup. And the Monarchs are starting with a pretty good program this year. Both teams come in one and one, and we should have an exciting game tonight. And to talk about the Monarchs uh, coming down the street a little bit is Sebastian Spencer. What do they bring to the table with their first-year coach, Derwin Henderson? Oh, well, Derwin Henderson has already adapted a winning mindset to this team. He won the city championship two years ago at Southeast High School, so he's looking to do the same thing with these kids. Only two returners came back, so it's a brand-new team, brand-new coaching staff, brand-new players. And with the Lawndale Cardinals, we saw them last week against Hawthorne. Chris Murray was the big man on campus in the fourth quarter with two touchdowns, one throwing and one rushing. Absolutely had a big game, but it was a balanced offense because DeAndre Shaw had 111 yards on 23 carries. We asked Coach about that. Which one do you use? They used the run to set up the passing game, so we should see plenty of both. Both teams run a spread offense. The other thing is that Lawndale, for the first time in a long time, has an abundance of riches. They have 11 separate starters on offense and defense. They're expecting to make the playoffs this year, according to Coach Matheson. And starters on either side of the ball for any school that we cover, especially here at Lawndale, that is a luxury. Kickoff is around the corner. Coming up next, the Monarchs and the Cardinals. After our national anthem sung by Christine Gonzalez as she walks right by broadcast position. Terrific rendition. Isaiah Torres, DeAndre Shaw, and number 44, Bo Estaya, the captains for the Cardinals, meeting the Morningside Monarchs. And let's get to the coin toss right now from Frank Obregon. We'll have zero tolerance for anybody being a knucklehead tonight, all right? We have a problem, we're gonna to talk to you, we're gonna work with you, but please play the game hard. We'll let you play hard, we'll let you play, but we expect good sportsmanship. Reasonable, is that fair? Okay. Lawndale, you guys are the visiting team tonight. Excuse me, Morningside, you're the visiting team tonight. So I'm gonna have you call the coin toss from the Are you gonna be our sportsman? Fair enough. You guys take a look at the coin. There's a head, there's a tail. Okay, I'm gonna flip the coin, I want you to call heads or tails. If I drop it, we'll do it again, all right? Well, it's in the air, please. Heads is the call, it is a tail. 
folks have won the toss. What would you like to do? Defer. You have deferred. Okay, just give me a second. Gentlemen, has won the toss. They have deferred. You want to kick the ball or you want to receive the ball? You want to receive it. You want to receive the ball? Which way do you guys want to kick? You want to kick that way? Okay, let's turn around and run over here. You guys want to here with me? So Morningside wins the toss and they will receive the ball and go right, left to right across your dial. And uh, so that means the Cardinals will get the ball in the second half. Right, and actually a quick adjustment there, Luke. Once that actually lost the toss is what happened. That's why they elected to receive. That's why Londell had the option first. And of course that left uh, no choice but for them to kick it off. For, so, uh, they'll be kicking because they elected to defer. So just about ready to get things underway. Kevin Del Cid will kick the ball off for the Cardinals. And receiving the ball on the far side is Gary Hill and number 22, Kristen Williams. Both were told by us, by Benny Porter, the offensive coordinator of the Monarchs, that uh, those are two exciting young Monarchs. Actually, exciting with a lot of speed. Both were CIF finalists in the 100 and the 200, and were just a couple of seconds, away, a couple of tenths of a second away from going to state championship. Here comes the kick, and that's actually Richard Fitzgerald making the kick. Gary Hill gets the ball. Hill waiting for blocking. He gets straightened up right at about the 30-yard line, and it'll be first and 10 for the Monarchs right at the 30-yard line. So good field position for the Monarchs to start the game. Just to give you a little background about them in terms of what you can expect tonight, they run a spread offense, so that means you should see at least three receivers, if not four, in the pattern. Maybe a back. They do feature uh, a back. Their running back last week was Christian Williams. He's number 22. He had 155 yards on 10 carries and three, and three touchdowns. Coach Ben Wardell being a kind and gracious host that he is has treated us to a couple of bottles of water because he know that there's going to be a lot of talking tonight because there's going to be a lot of action tonight, Lou. Balls are going to be flying up in the air, Rufus, that's for sure. Spread offense, Williams back in the backfield with the quarterback, and that's Clarence Jackson. The ball is on the ground. There's a fumble recovered by the Cardinal. And let's see, down at the bottom of that heap. And that was two of David Tuivai. David Tuavai, number 48, who had a terrific game last week. So on the first play, a fumble. Quarterback on that play, because they did make a switch for tonight's contest, was number 10. No, no, no. Yes, number 10 for them. That was Damone McGuire, whom we were told possibly wouldn't be starting. But That's we see right. that he is. And on the pitch, Jonathan Hill, ball not handled very cleanly, goes for a turnover. So the ball on the 22 yard line and right away some good defense as DeAndre Shaw didn't get any running, may, may have lost a yard. Of course, two feature players for the Lawndale Cardinals on offense, quarterback Chris Murray. Murray last week had 11 completions out of 16 attempts for 184 yards. One pass and TD also picked up 77 yards on the ground and scored two TDs rushing himself. Pass, a little short pass and juggle up in the air and dropped by Angerson Lambert, but good defense over there as well. So it'll be third down and about 12 yards to go. Now, I remember Angerson last year, I believe it was either against Hawthorne or uh, Losinger, where he had the big game. And in fact, was a player of the game for us last year. This year, he's a bit of a small guy, but he's out there playing a the slot receiver for the Cardinals. Richard Rivera split to the near side. Ball snapped low, but the throw 
is, is it caught? They're going to call it a, caught, a catch, and that's to Austin Manigo. Well, you so. had an official over there right on top of the play. That's your uh, head linesman. Head linesman is the official that works the side with the chains. But it's a fourth down to fourth and about three. So about a nine-yard gain, we'll call it. So with 10.45, the first fourth down opportunity deep inside of Monarch territory. They're not going to go for the field goal. They're going to try to keep the chains moving into the end zone. And wow, we've we got flags flag. in the backfield. you got flags up there. I think you may have a rough in the passer flag back at the uh, back behind the uh, quarterback. But then you also have one in the flat. I, I mean, not in the flat, but in the pass pattern. I think they'll take the one that was in the pass pattern. Thank Frank Obregon. Trying to get the call clear with the umpire, Derek Clayton. So 10.34 left, and the pass was intended for Lambert over the middle. But uh, it looked like he got hit before the ball even got there. Well, this is an interesting decision because I believe that both of the flags are against Morningside. Uh, either one will obviously result in a first down. The question right now that they're deciding is, is one, which one do you penalize, and two, what the position is going to be, and what choices will Coach Mathis have? Okay, so it's roughing the passer. And then personal foul, pass interference on Lawn day or on the morning side, excuse me. So at any rate, like you say, it's the first down. It's first down. What's so it's half now? the distance. Okay, it'll be the position of the ball. So it's going to be inside the 10 yard line. So it'll be first and goal, or are they going to call it? Well, they have it. Uh, should be fourth and goal. What is that, about the five yard line? Four yard line? Uh, that's about the four. I mean, he's set up right on the goal. So Murray out of the shotgun has two running backs with him. DeAndre gets the handoff and gets hit at the line of scrimmage right away. A good hit by Ty Hines. So no gain. So it'll be second and goal. Big line for Lawndale. They're going to be tested tonight against these Monarchs with a lot of quickness. Fitzgerald gets the ball, trying to find the end zone. And maybe gets two yards, Rufus. Might be third and goal from the two. Well, what we see is this morning side Monarch defense really stiffening boy because their backs are against the wall but they aren't making it easy they aren't just rolling over um, for this cardinal team cardinals right now trying to cash in that that fumble recovery that they had deep in monarch territory deandre shaw and fitzgerald there fitzgerald gets the handoff and That's burrowing his way towards the end zone and it is a touchdown for lawndale So Fitzgerald burrowing his way in, and that makes it six to nothing. Yeah, you see on the replay, boy, Fitzgerald just lowered his head, blue, picked up the two yard, scored the TD. Two yard run by Fitzgerald, and with that score, that puts the Cardinal on top as they draw the first score. And Ryan trying to boot it through the uprights for the extra point and does. So Ryan Fitzgerald seven and Morningside nothing. And a flag on the play to go along with it. Roughing the kicker against Morningside. So that's three penalties they've had here, Lou, in the first two and a half minutes. And that's gonna drive Coach Henderson crazy as we watch the replay. Let's see if we can see the roughing. There. There it is. Well, yep. you see contact. You know, those kickers now, a lot of those guys take acting classes, man. <laughs> you know. Instead of going to the weight room, you mean? Right. So 
So a seven play drive. And that went 22 yards. Took about a minute and a half. So now the Cardinals will have a major advantage as you see Richard Rivera cheering his buddies on. So look at that, they're in Monarch territory for the kickoff, Rufus. Right. They're gonna kick off from the 45 yard line. That's Fitzgerald lining up to kick. Obviously you know by now, he's number 28, Richard Fitzgerald. Running back, senior, also the kicker. Gary Hill gets the ball inside the 20 yard line, breaks some tackles and runs it back pretty decently for the Monarchs. It'll be first and 10, Finally right around out, the 30-yard line. Forced out of bounds by Pablo Rodriguez. Check that, that's right around the 20-yard line. So we'll call it the 21. And give credit on that play to Ryan Alexander as well. We saw Ryan have a couple of big games last year also for the card. So they've got a number of weapons, this Cardinal football team. And now Clarence Jackson is at quarterback for the Monarchs. Low snap at the handoff is to the running back. And that's Kristen Williams. Williams broke tackles, Rufus, and he's got those strong legs and just kept churning for a first down. And that's a name you're gonna hear a lot tonight, fans. Kristen Williams, number 22. So a timeout on the field by Lawndale. Coach Matheson maybe didn't see uh, something, saw something he didn't like. So that was an 11 yard gain. And a first down. So 32 yard line for the Monarchs. So while the Monarchs are out there, their center's Oscar Gomez, just a sophomore. The anchor of that offensive line is Anthony Moran, Damon Jones, Amaz Ferguson, and Efren Fitz. And uh, we're told that he gives Fitz to defensive <laughs> linemen. They say he's one of the best. And of course, the leader of um, that Cardinal defense, and we'll get to that in a moment. Wow, looks Williams. like some movement. Williams was moving before the ball was snapped, it looked like Rufus, but uh, he gets about three yards, gets up to about the 34 yard line. So a two yard gain. And Jackson looking at his wristband, trying to decipher the 100 some odd plays that the Monarchs run, wow. and that yeah. was a lot of movement there, Rufus. Well, that time they got him. Quite frankly, that was the same thing they did on the play before that, but we thought that there was movement. Now we see the indication. Are we second down, but they'll back him up five yards. So right now, Rufus, the Monarchs are their own worst enemy. It's gonna be second down and 12. In the penalty department, that is their fourth of the game. And that pass is incomplete. Pass was intended for Aaron Berry. But check that, that was intended for Jaquan Jackson. So now it's third down and 12. From the 29 yard line, Getting some signals flagged in. Looking at the wristbands now. So I thought it was supposed to be a quick spread offense. <laughs> they better watch the clock. Well, it's spread, but right now it's not quick, and there's another fumble, except this time the quarterback falls on it, recovers it. That's Clarence Jackson, who right now is playing quarterback. And watch David Tuavai on the pursuit, number 48. Wow, and Jackson just fortunate enough to be able to recover that lead. 
So now you got a fourth and looks like 20 plus. They're calling, yeah, fourth and 19. From about the 10 yard line, 11 yard line. The Block. kick is blocked. So Lawndale is sitting in the catbird seat again. And that's inside the 15 yard line, it looks wow. like, Rufus. Well, you talk about playing with a short field. That's a midget sized field <laughs> when you start at the uh, 15 yard line because the last drive started, I believe, inside the 20. Well, now they're calling at the 21 yard line. Hand off to Shaw, he picks up a couple tough yards as he moves inside the 20. So the Cardinals have the Monarchs on their heels and if they uh, can score a touchdown here, Rufus, that'll uh, really be advantage Lawndale. Well, what it'll mean is that Morningside will be playing at least the rest of the way un until they make up the deficit. If they do, they'll be playing uphill. Hand off again. So the Cardinals keeping it on the ground, trying to get their running game going. And now you got another flag thrown in, in the midst of, of the scrum. So Shaw getting another three yards. So it'll be third down and six. Wow. Personal foul. And that one's against Morningside. Lou, that is their fifth penalty in the first less than five minutes of the game. So that's uh, first and goal for the Cardinals at about the seven yard line. So right now the Cardinals are getting a lot of gifts. There's Fitzgerald finds a nice hole and he's rumbling towards the end zone. Wow. Did he get there? Just missed it, Rufus. No, no signal that he did. So that means, boy, he's got to be on about the one yard line, Lou. So Richard Fitzgerald really getting down low. And just waiting for the man with the yard marker to move. He's right on the goal line, Rufus. So we're gonna call that a six yard run. Yeah. I mean, that's for less than a yard. Murray holds on to the ball, actually gives it to Fitzgerald, but this time they snuff it out. They'll give him forward progress, though, back to the line of scrimmage. Ty Hines and Sione Sofili, the defensive captain on the play there. Watch the pursuit. Wow. Wow. Good job by Fitzgerald to recover that. Yeah. As you saw in the replay, that was nearly a fumble. Good strong arms by Fitzgerald, or that could have been a disaster for the uh, Cardinals. And now we've got an injured or certainly at, at least an equipment issue and looks, for number six. Johnny Lopez looks like he has an injured arm or something injured because he's just not walking right, Rufus. Right. So on the play, and no gain. He's over on the far sideline as they attend to him. We've got a Momentary break in the action. Now Frank Obergaard says, wind the play clock, let's get it started. John Trell Hogan also making a good defensive play for the Monarchs. Murray hands it off to Shaw, is hit at the goal line. Good lateral pursuit by the Monarchs. And they're gonna call it a touchdown. They call it a touchdown for the Cardinals. And that was DeAndre Shaw with the carry there. Carry, they'll, they'll officially call it a yard, but it really was about a foot and a half. <laughs> so 5.43 left to go in the first quarter. It's 13 to nothing in favor of Lawndale. There you see it, DeAndre Shaw finishing it off and Fitzgerald coming in to tack on the extra point. Snap back ball down, the kick wow, is no good. no good. 
So 5.43 left to go in the first quarter. It's 13 to nothing, so that's the only silver lining in this cloud, this uh, storm cloud for the Monarchs, is they did not uh, give up the extra point. Nonetheless, they trail, as you mentioned, by a margin of 13 to nothing. Both of them, the results of turnovers because a blocked punt is a turnover, um, as well as the early fumble. Two minutes and seven seconds on that one. On that one. Five plays. So two turnovers result in two touchdowns for the Cardinals. So as the Cardinals prepare to kick off, that's Fitzgerald who handles the kicking duties. The Monarchs will be taking their third crack at getting going. They've yet to even pick up a first down. So a whistle on the play by the line judge. Some sort of a delay, so after the false start, Richard Fitzgerald will get it going. Kicks it ah, short and out of, out of bounds at about the 30-yard line, a penalty flag in the air. Usually the coaches decline that and take the ball. Well, they're going to get it at the 35-yard line, if I'm not mistaken, this year. You know, it used to be, well, yeah, Actually, it may even be the 40. I, I know there was a rules change. We'll find out right now, except we got a procedure penalty. So that was obviously declined, and they put the ball down. That's a 50. So it's a 35-yard line. 35. That's the best field position all night for the Monarchs. Damone McGuire back in the ball game, a quarterback for Morningside, hands it off or keeps the ball, and wow. Good defense on the play by Emmanuel Ayo. Excellent defense by Emmanuel because their quarterback is not easy to control McGuire. So the Monarchs take another timeout, or is that their first one? I think that's going to be their first, and if I'm not mistaken, the first timeout of the game was charged to the Cardinal. So there's, I believe there's been three timeouts tonight. So... Our guys and the geniuses in the truck thinks it's a couple of timeouts. We have our timeouts right. listed on our new graphics this year, Rufus. Ah, oh, okay. So why do they have four stripes here? You don't get four timeouts and Once a half. for decoration. <laughs> oh. It's fall. It's very festive. McGuire on the play action, throws it on the sideline, and the pass was intended for Gary Hill, but that was way overthrown. So it'll be third down and about 12. We overthrown last week. Gary Hill had a TD catch. He and Joe Mar Hart, Joe Mar Hart's number one. Haven't seen, he's over here to the near side as the wide receiver. In the slot is number seven, Charles Ocano. Wow. Oops. Picano and Hart jumped the gun. So five more yards will be stepped off towards the left. And it'll be third down and about 18. From the 27 yard line. And this is definitely not the way Coach Henderson envisioned this one. Right. Last time it was third and, and 19. Now Long third pass down the sideline. Wow. Oh, in and out of the hands. Well, and Anderson Lambert. Lambert. 
And I'll tell you what, he knows he should have had that one. Yeah. So a good looking pass by the quarterback, the one Aguirre. It was came, just at the last minute, it looks like, Rufus, yeah. by Gary Hill. Well, it came off his receiver's hands and into the hand, in and out of the hands of Ingerson Lambert. So it looks like they're going for it on fourth down, Rufus. Fourth and 18. Boy, that's a so lot of heart. Down the sideline again and out of bounds. Is there a flag? No, there isn't. The pass is intended for Jaquan Johnson. Wow. And so inside the 30, near the 25, it'll be first and 10, deep again in Monarch territory. So that only took 30 seconds, Rufus. So let's see if the Cardinals can take advantage of this one. This is their worst field position oh. at the 27-yard right. line. <laughs> Murray, and now the coaching staff, who we got a timeout on the field by Monarchs, the Monarchs. So the press box announcer just said the second timeout. Which would be consistent with what I said on the last timeout. Well, we that always know different. that you may not always be right, but you're never wrong. But, hey, what do I know? But right now, if you're a Lawndale Cardinal fan, you got to be liking what you're seeing so far. And this blue is only the first quarter, and, and we're barely halfway through the first quarter. Uh, yeah. How many minutes in a quarter? There are 12 minutes in a quarter. We may be here at 11 o'clock tonight at this pace. I thought we were here late last week. Is that the sunrise or the sunset over there? I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, looks like we're having cold pizza. But wait a minute, there is no cold pizza left. We got our City TV production crew. They leave right. no pizza box unturned. There you go. But again, for the record, that timeout charged two morning side, so they've used two of their allotted three timeouts, and Longdale has used one of their allotted three timeouts. And, and Trips to the right for Longdale. Gary Hill has to come back in. Look out, Murray is chased Whoa. out of the pocket. The ball is Whoa. loose. The Monarchs are going to pick it up, or are they? They will. Now we have a, fumble, a penalty flag there as well. That ball came squirting out. And yep. I believe the ball was recovered by John Trell Hogan. So Murray fumbled on the play on the quarterback draw, straight up the middle. We'll see that on the replay. And then we saw a flag come in late. So now there's a discussion about what the uh, flag is about. And let's see what Frank Obergon, the white hat, tells us. Wow. Personal foul against the Monarchs. So it's first down Monarchs. Although it's going to be deeper into their territory. So even though they catch a break, they don't catch a break. A dead ball personal foul against the Monarchs. I can't imagine that their coach, Derwin Henderson, is in the least bit happy with this play call. And here's the replay though. We'll see if we can see. Okay, ball comes loose there. Well, we come back to live action. The ball action. is loose again. And let's see who is going to come up with the ball. I believe the Monarchs did, Rufus. And, yep, McGuire comes up with the ball. But the original line of scrimmage for them was the nine-yard line. Ball. And the ball goes all the way back to the goal line. That was almost a yeah. safety. Almost a safety, and you're right. It goes, it came loose there. That was number 22, losing control of the ball. Williams. Oh, that's Williams. So an eight-yard loss. A long pass by McGuire, and that is caught by Hill. Hill's got a first down and then some. Finally drugged down from behind by Ryan Alexander. So big first down, pitch and catch 
by McGuire and Hill. To the 39 yard line. So that was a 38 yard catch. First completion of the night for the Monarchs. And again, and guess who it was to? Gary Hill. Bad snap. McGuire trying to get some yardage and does after snaring that snap. Gets across the 40 yard line. We'll call it the 41. So on the busted play, a two yard gain for McGuire. What we're starting to see is the Monarchs get a little bit of momentum going. They had the big pass and play, and even on the busted play, they pick up positive yardage. And that's too much time. Called by the back judge, Jeff Taylor. So another shot in the foot. Well, that's here. We still got 335 left in the first quarter, Lou, and that's already eight penalties by my count wow. against the Monarchs. So it's second down at about 13. McGuire has Williams with him on the option play, and he gets hit hard and finally taken down. The original hit was by Emmanuel Ayo, and he was finished off by David Tuivai. And that's a, a couple of times tonight we've had the opportunity to call both of those names, Ayo and Tuivai. So the ball. Rufus goes all the way back to the 29-yard line. I'm gonna call that a seven-yard loss. And once again, it's a third and long situation for the Monarchs as they're facing a third and 19. They've had a third and 19, a third and 18, and now another third and 19. So McGuire with Williams in the backfield. And now a timeout on the field. So the Monarchs in the first quarter with 2.36 left in the first quarter are now out of timeouts. They're out of timeout because that's three by, by our count. So why don't we introduce you to the officials as long as we're here. <laughs> Frank Obregon, we're very familiar with him. He's going to have some uh, parting gifts. He's been on the air so much. He's been on the air longer than Warren Sebastian tonight. Frank's also the just finished the term as the president of the California Basketball Officials Association for the entire for the entire state. And a nice man as well. Derek Clayton is the umpire. Head linesman is Dimitri Upshaw. Line judge is Michael Wainwright. And the back judge is Jeff Taylor, as we see the head coach for Lawndale. That is Rick Matheson. Last year, the Monarchs were two and three in Ocean League and five and five overall. Pass, have a man open, wow. and Hill was just underthrown. Hill was just underthrown, and more importantly, as we see number six, six is Darius Flowers with his hands on his helmet because what happened was the receiver got behind him. If they connect on that pass play, Lou, that's six. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there will be something yeah, said about that. As you can that. see, oh, yeah. the, receiver, the receiver's behind the defense. That should never happen, never, on a third and 19. Dustin Auger is also there as well. It's fourth down and 19. Quick punt, pooch punt by McGuire. And... The Cardinals will just be happy to let it bounce, thank you very much, as Lambert lets it touch there, and it's down by the Monarchs, and it'll be first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Let's go to Sebastian. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Before the warm-ups, I heard Coach 
Darwin Henderson telling his team that our mind is not on football right now. A lot of his players were in the pregame messing around, and he felt like they just weren't getting down to business with their stretches and everything to get them ready for the game. And it showed from the beginning of the game. They've turned over the ball to Londale three times on a 36-yard line, the 22-yard line, and the 26, putting the offense in perfect position to score without even trying. Let's see, can they get it together, guys? Back to you. The defense uh, tried to stop Shaw, but Shaw is off to the races. Shaw spun, uh, spun away from the line and finally is out of bounds. And we're going to get another personal foul call, a late hit out of bounds. And that's down to the 30-yard line of Morningside and an attack on another 10. Okay, on, on a drive that started at the 36, the midfield is 14. So okay. 30 yards, 30 plus. That's 44. So it's a 44-yard run. Now let's see and how much Look at Murray blocking through. downfield, too. So a terrific play. So personal foul on Morningside. And I said 44, I should have said a 36-yard run, and now they tackle on the penalty yardage. So 34 yards on the first down, so 54, uh, 44 yards net. Exactly. Ball's inside the 20, looks like what would be about the 15 yard line. So that's where we'll call it. So Murray keeps it, trying to get around right end, and another penalty flag, Rufus. It's a five yard gain, and that's a hold on Lawndale. So John Trell Hogan was there saying, waving his arms. So if that's a hold against Lawndale with two minutes left in the first quarter, that's going to be Lawndale's third foul. But right now, Morningside winning the penalty contest by a margin of nine to three. So it'll be first down and 20 from the 25. And they've got to get down to about the two. Call it the three maybe to pick up the first down. Fitzgerald and DeAndre with him. DeAndre gets the ball and is wrapped up immediately. Maybe a loss on the play of a yard. Sione Sofili was one of the three Monarchs there. So got a little bit of a gain on that one, Rufus. Right. Gonna call it a two yard gain maybe. Still second and a whole lot. Scoreboard shows it as second and 20. Murray has it, he's gonna keep it has DeAndre Evans with him and just has run out of bounds on this side of the ball. Also with him was in the game for the first time, Davion Ward. But not enough blocking as uh, the Monarchs really strung that out nicely, so no gain for Murray. No gain, you got to test that defensive backfield now for the uh, Monarchs. Ingerson Lambert comes in. He's one of the three split to the right side. Richard Rivera, the lone wide receiver on the left. And now we have a timeout taken, and it has to be on the Cardinals. Has to be, and it is. So Coach Matheson trying to see the defense and trying to figure it out because he has two plays to get a first down. Because I'm sure we're in four down territory, but the 
Well, we're certainly in field goal territory if, you, if you've got one of those that you got confidence in. Kevin Del Cid was listed as the kicker, kicker number 27, but Richard Fitzgerald has been doing the kicking tonight. So we'll have to see what that decision is. I would think you'd want to at least put some points of, uh, put right. some oh, distance you between you do. and the Monarchs. Murray looks to the right side, and that was wow. almost picked off. There was nobody there. Lambert had already passed the intended um, point of the reception where, where, where his quarterback was expecting him to be. Not quite sure whose fault that is because, as you can see, that pass clearly behind uh, Lambert if he was the intended receiver. So fourth down and, well, we'll call it 20. Murray back to pass. Wow. And nobody there. Oh, gets out of the clutches, and then somebody loses their helmet. A monarch loses their helmet. That was Hogan losing his helmet. So the Cardinals turn it over on downs with 49 seconds left in the first quarter. And Murray on the scramble stepped right into the teeth of the defense. He escaped the first two pursuers, but you see him collapsing around him in number 21 for the Monarchs, that's John Trail Hogan. Hogan brings him down. So Collins, the 26 yard line. So on downs. And Damone McGuire running the offense with Williams with him on the option play. Williams gets it, turns the corner. Turning on that speed as well. Gets into Cardinal territory for the first time tonight. And a good open field tackle by Justin Augers. And that's what you had to be concerned about, Lou. We, we, we started on the last drive before penalties killed it. Saw some positive momentum being established by Morningside. Boy, they come out with a big play for first down on this drive. So ironically, a 34-yard run. McGuire is going to keep it himself. Is stopped and he'll. Wow. And now you've got a flag being thrown by the official, uh, the referee, Frank Obergon, and I believe that one's going to go against the cart. Might be a late hit. And if it is, it's going to tack 15 yards onto the play. Blow to the head. So first down, so let's watch it on the replay. Goes down to the 34. Want to see the blow, there it is, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a big one, but it still counts. So from the 34 yard line, bad snap, McGuire waits for a hole to open up and gets about five yards out of that, Rufus. Oh, it looks like that snap hit the ground. I'll have to see. Yeah, that's on the ground, apparently. That'll be interesting. I, I have to ask one of our officiating friends about that, Lou, because, and that's the second time I've seen that tonight, where the snap back to the quarterback, because I thought that made the ball dead, but apparently you can pick it up off the ground uh, on the snap and continue to play. So first quarter comes to an end. Let's watch it again. Yeah, that's on the ground. Did he trap it? Well, he didn't trap it, but it's on the snap. The point is he picks it up, you know, to make the play. That's one of those I'll be glad to ask one of our officiating buddies at halftime about that one. You know, maybe we can get uh, Sebastian to ask Frank Obregon. At any rate, it'll be second down and five as we switch sides. Lamaz Ferguson, six foot three, 260 pounds. Just saw him stand up, Rufus. He's every bit of 260. <laughs> 
McGuire with Williams to his right. Looks down the middle, thrown for the end zone, and nice defensive play. Pass is intended Murray. for Jomar Hart. I should say Christian Coleman, another one of those returners, because again, on this team, as Coach pointed out to him, he's got 11 starters on defense, 11 starters on offense. Watch this defensive play. So it's third down and five. Big play for the Cardinal defense. Pass down the middle again. This one's blocked, Rufus. And well done by the Lawndale defense. Let's see if we can catch who got a paw up in the air. Now we saw the paw, but we don't know whose paw it was, paw. Well, it was a Cardinal paw, that's for sure. If Cardinals have paws. So they're gonna go for it on fourth and five. Not to lose, not from this field position. Three receivers to the left of McGuire. Still looking at the offensive coordinator for a signal. Now Williams switches over to the right and too much time, so it's gonna be fourth and 10. You know, it, it, it almost seemed to me that they were deliberately taking too much time just to move five yards back to uh, be in punting position. Now we'll see if they actually punt the ball, but there was simply no sense of urgency on the part of the Monarchs to get that playoff. Well, unless McGuire Pooch kicks it again, they're still in an offensive formation. They're that, still looking to, well, I'm not sure what this is now. They're all looking to their sideline. And it's a dangerous call because you don't know how many of the 25 seconds is left. So McGuire back to pass, throws it over the middle, caught on a little swing pass. A play still alive, but it's going to obviously be stopped short. There are no flags on the play. Pass so. is complete to Charles Acano. And it'll be turned over on downs for Lawndale right at about, well, we'll call it the 30-yard line. Or will we call it the 29? Well, we'll see. Actually, we're going to call it the 31. Okay. 31 it is. Because they're on the yard marker anyway is on this side at 30, but the football well, let me, let me stay corrected. I mean, the football is an entirely different place. Now they <laughs> look like they're in the same place. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hand off to DeAndre Evans. Evans getting about five or six yards, so it'll be second down and about five or four or five yards. There you see Shaw there breaking a tackle. So five yards for DeAndre. Murray, Lambert. Lambert's turning on his own speed and gets to midfield and finally out of bounds and they're gonna call another penalty. Well, that's because the second defender piled on long after uh, Lambert was out of bounds. So we'll call it a 15 yard reception. And 15 more yards gets it to the 34 yard line. Personal foul, face mask, okay. I thought it was a late hit out of bounds, but either way, it's a 15-yard penalty. Well, maybe we can and catch it on the replay if we have it. And so they start the second quarter with the penalty. You see Lambert, and it's now we're back to live action. And Shaw gets nothing. Ninth carry for DeAndre. 
And good defense up front. Andre comes off to catch a breather. We'll see who they line up in the backfield this time. It looks, looks like, like Ward. Davion Ward it is, number 32. Trips to the left of Murray. He keeps it. Murray waiting for his blocker and gets inside the 15-yard line. And a good block down the sideline by Manigo. And a first down for Lawndale with 10.51 left to go in the half. Nice fake handoff. So at the 15 yard line, that's a 19 yard gain. DeAndre Shaw trying to get out of the shoestring and just couldn't do it. A good defensive play by Deshaun Williams to grab on to DeAndre shoot. So no gain. Second down and 10 from the 15 yard line. Getting some good blocks up front there from Steven Almada. Murray back to pass, looking to oh, over the middle. Uh, and that one was almost picked off, Rufus, as the ball was intended for Anthony Gray. We had Gray coming across the middle, but his outside receiver was also open. We don't see it on the replay. And in fact, that's why I thought he was going to go to the outside, Lou, but they, they went for the slant. So now it's third down and 10 from the 15. Need to get to the five, and now it's going to be third and 15. A whole host of Cardinals left the flock in a hurry. Oh, they're going to call it on the Monarchs. Fooled me. Their second penalty here in the second quarter, the 11th overall for the game. So it's third and five from the 10 yard line, Rufus, with 9.24 left to go in the first half. And a 13 to nothing lead. Would you go for the end zone or for the first down? Uh, I'm going for the end zone. Murray hands it off and going nowhere. Hogan there on defense again is Shaw. No game. So it's fourth down for the Cardinals. And that's the third no gain in a row for Shaw. The Cardinals still have one timeout left with nine minutes left to go. And Tenno going up the middle. Obviously, he likes the blocking scheme that that um, that Dad supposes is intended to go that direction, but it's not opening anything up. Now Murray goes uh, the other way. Murray gets hit hard. And that was by Ty Hines. So they give it up on downs, but at least it's deep in Monarch territory at about the six yard line. So four yards the hard way for Murray. A very hard way. So they come up a yard short on the fourth down play. And again, if you're in a Monarch, so considering that four times now, Lawndale has had the ball inside the 10-yard line. The Romans scored twice on it, two times. They've left money on the table. Williams gets the ball on the handoff from McGuire. And a nice gain, Rufus. So in the game that right now, theoretically, the score should be at least, if you discount the kicking game, should be at least 25 nothing. all right? It's only 13 nothing. so if you're the Monarchs, you got life. You sure do. That's why that extra point was so important. And then uh, that drive where Lawndale couldn't get anything out of it after the big turnover again on downs. So Williams picks up the ball and picks up three more. So it'll be second or third down and two from the 13. Seven forty-six left in the half. 
And a handoff again. <laughs> or no, it wasn't a handoff. It was a keeper, but the Cardinals were all over McGuire like he was a, a pack of suet on the, on the eaves out there at springtime. There you go. Whatever suet is, I guess it must be oh, good. come on now. <laughs> you don't know what that is, being from the south? So what you got me, but now we might call it by something different. So no gain on the play. A lot of arm tackling right there by the Cardinal defender. Hate to call him out, but I will. That's Ryan Alexander. That's a name that's very familiar to the fans here. Mario Chiora. City TV. Making a good shoulder tackle. And now Isaiah Thomas. On the pooch punt, that's straight up in the air. And that's going to be downed. Another good field position for Lawndale. And they really need to cash this one in with 6.46 left to go in the half. Yeah, I mean, yet you talk about an abundance of riches in terms of field position. That punt by... McGuire, who's also the quarterback. Boy, I don't know, what was the net on that thing? Eight yards. Murray back to pass, looking right, or left, now right, now tucks it under, and goes out of bounds to stop the clock. Smart play. Don't know if you got out of, got any yardage out of it, Rufus, at the 21 yard line. And that was Deshaun Williams who chased him out. Six foot two, 200 pound junior. So we're gonna call it the 19 yard line. So a two yard gain for Murray. Hand off to Shaw. Shaw gets a hole. Shaw gets good yardage. And finally wrapped up inside the 15. We'll call it the 14. So it'll be third down and about three yards to go, Rufus. Third and three. Again, as you said, as you said before, two down territory. Shaw gets the handoff again, waiting for a hole. Does should have the first down. Right at the 10 yard line, Rufus. I think he's gonna have it on, on this carry, Lou. And that's a signal from the referee. So it's gonna be first and goal. So first down for Evans, as he got bopped in the head by Jose Mejia and wrapped up by Hogan with six minutes left to go in the first half, clock rolling. First and goal. Murray over the middle, has a man, caught. Touchdown. And is it a touchdown? No signal yet. No. Okay, they're gonna say he was Anthony down. Anthony Gray. And of course, you don't have to be down by contact. But they're saying in the act of catching the ball, he went to the ground, and so he was automatically down, even though the reception is good. Gonna call that right at the one yard line, Rufus. Wow. So a nine yard catch, hand and off up the middle, down. and that's a touchdown for the Cardinals. 19 to nothing, Lawndale. And, and the, that was Davion Ward burrowing his way into the end zone. 5.32, 22 I should say, of the second quarter. So that's exactly what Lawndale should be doing is taking advantage of all of these turnovers and lack of execution by the Monarchs. Well, on that possession, they did look, of course, they got it with excellent field possession, but nothing new there because they've had it. This time they're going for the two-point conversion. And, and it looks like good, they got it. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what the flag is. It's Shaw found his way into the end zone for the two points, but let's see what the flag is first.
Frank Obregon talking it over. No flag. So the two point conversion is good and it's 21 to nothing in favor of Lawndale, Rufus. So a five play drive and let's watch this blocking up front. Fitzgerald with a terrific block, Rufus. That really opened things up. Shaw finds a little crease to get through and slithers through it. So now we've got a, a more conventional score at 21 nothing. Five plays, 21 yards. They haven't even broken a sweat yet. Not yet, but thankfully this quarter is going a little bit faster than the uh, previous one. So you have a new kicker as Fitzgerald's kind of wore out. This one is fielded by Jonathan Hill. Jonathan Hill gets hit by Ryan Alexander and at the 25 yard line. So doing the kicking chores now is number 53 and he's not on our roster. Either, yep, number 53. Not on my roster. Not on mine because I think we probably get bought ours at the same store. <laughs> yeah. From the Google machine. Right. So 514 left to go in the half. The Monarchs have the ball. I'm going to call that their own 29 yard line, 30 yard, 29 yard line. McGuire still in at quarterback. And the snap goes over his head. And a nice heads up tackle by Io. He's all over the place tonight, Rufus. Emmanuel Io indeed has been. And that goes all the way back to what, the 17 yard line? Here we see it was a high snap. Can't charge that to the quarterback, McGuire. Heck, he does a good job of saving the possession. So an eight yard loss. So second down and 18. Actually, it looks a little more than that. Yeah, another high snap. And Williams has it now. Watch him run. See if they can catch him. Gets back into positive territory, back to the 30-yard line. Yeah, he gets back to, gets beyond the original line of scrimmage. You know, when you talk to Coach Henderson, he talks about the future, man. He's talking, he's talking tough. He says in two or three years, this team will be a CIF champion. Okay, this is what we said to him. Well, he already has one CF championship in his hip pocket. That's true. And he had a lot of kids show up for the summer. Pass down the right sideline. That's caught. That's going to be good enough for a first down, Rufus. And look out. That's dangerous territory. Now we got we go. more flags. There was already an initial flag loose. So here's what we got. We're going to have two, five, two separate fouls on the play, I believe, because you have one, because this second one, I believe, is going to be a dead ball foul. So we'll see how they sort this out. And you got the whole crew over there. All sorts of dirty laundry down there. So Frank Obregon and the guys have been real busy. Maybe we can get the replay of the play in before we get the call. Ask and he shall receive. So a nice catch. That was by Jomar Hart. Good enough for 10 yards. Okay, yeah. Well, that's one penalty right there. So here comes Frank Obregon. Let's see. An eligible man downfield, is that what that is? Yeah. Personal foul. Dead ball, personal foul. Against Lawndale, so are they offsetting? So we're gonna replay the down, or what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna watch and find out with you. That's yep. in the sport that I officiate, so. Okay, so they spot the ball first and 10 from the 45, so I guess well, I the think play counts? Well, I think they're gonna counts? enforce both. 
first of all. Okay, yeah, because the, the line of scrimmage is at the 45. The ball was out of bounds at the 41. Or actually, what is that, the 40? The 40. Okay, so that's that's where the foul was. Is that Ben again? That's Ben again. Raining down gifts on us. Back to pass as McGuire has a man open and a terrific defensive play on Gary Hill. Yeah. And that was Justin Augers. Let's watch this play, Rufus. Got to love it. Coach Benny taking care of us, keeping there us fat go, and happy man. up here. I, I, I see why we've been over here three weeks in a row. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we may just uh, put a plaque up here, get our mail here. <laughs> That's right. Keeps taking care of us like that. McGuire back to pass, looks down the right side, and pass. again, yeah. Jomar Hart, are they going to call pass interference, or was that just good, nah. plain old defense? That was good, plain old defense. I don't see a flag on the play, see an indication. It's our old buddy, Kristen Coleman. That it's a third down coming up now for. So good defense being shown on the pass by the Cardinals, and Coach Matheson called it. He says, spread offense, defense, heck, we go against that every day. Pitch on the play, and now nice the penalty flag. flag stops everything as Williams had a nice corner to turn. So it'll be minus five on the Monarchs. It'll be third and 15, Rufus. So how many penalties is that? Uh, that one was against the Monarchs as well. Hey, by my count, Lou, that's 14 in the game. Penalties? Penalties, yes. Wow, okay. That's five here in the second quarter alone. First, with, first quarter ended with nine. Three receivers on this near side, including Jaquan Johnson. Also Charles Acano. But the handoff goes to Williams and a terrific pursuit and tackle by Boa Staya, one of the coach's kids. So they're gonna call that no gain, Rufus. Big Bo. Finishing off the job there. Justin Wallace also in there helping out. And here's a another penalty. Well, this can't be too much time. Somebody lined up offside. Ah, uh, you're going to assume, but let's see. No, there's a sideline infraction. Uh-oh. Wow, they've had just about every kind of penalty you can call <laughs> that you can imagine. Well, it's, it's fourth down, so do you make it fourth and 20 or fourth and 15? Wow. Keep it that way. A sideline infraction. Now, what is that, somebody over the white line? Well, it's that, somebody, somebody running their mouth. You know, it could be a whole lot of things. First of all, the official may have said to someone, you need to step back. Because not only is there a space that you're confined to, uh, you can't be right up on the sideline. Play action, and that's caught by Hart. That's going to yeah. be a first down. Wow, what a fake by yeah. McGuire, who faked the handoff to Williams and threw it down the middle. Jomar Hart with the catch, Rufus, at the Lawndale 45-yard yeah. line, 44-yard line. And stop for Lawndale is Coleman, but a little bit late. He went for the tackle instead of the breakup of the pass. That was a 19-yard gain. So the handoff went to Williams, and he got back to the line of scrimmage and was finished off by Isaiah Torres for a one-yard gain. So two minutes and 17 seconds, clock rolling, second down and eight for McGuire and the Monarchs. Williams looking for a hole, 
Starting to get some holes now, Rufus. Starting to get some, starting to pick up. Some and rhythm. Now they're in their two minute offense. So now they're at the 40 yard line. So we're gonna call that third and a long three, we'll call it four. Three that, yards for Williams. That big old lineman. And then the 6'3", 260, that's number 70, Ferguson. He is all of that. There are some wide rear ends down there. McGuire passing long down the right side, looking for Hart and underthrew him. As Hart got by Kristen Coleman. Well, he got by him, but, but his quarterback threw the ball over the wrong shoulder. His, the receiver looking for which direction that pass was coming in. Yep, made him turn around with 123 left. Two receivers on either side of McGuire. This second quarter has moved a little bit quicker. That first quarter took 45 minutes to play. McGuire, oop, the, pat, the snap goes right to Williams and it goes, pops wow. right into the hands of Londale. With the ball going downfield is Darius Flowers into the end zone, touchdown Londale. 27 to nothing in favor of Londale and Flowers with the run. That's 50, that's maybe 60. We'll see where the original line of scrimmage so was. 41 yard line, so that's 59 yards. Oh, wait a minute, check that, 60 yards even. So 60 yard fumble recovery and flowers into the hizzy. Fumble return, loud. Fitzgerald, out of Murray's hold, will try to tack on the extra point. Blocked. Well. Okay, no good. Thought it's our early signal that it is good, but the six makes an extra point is no good. 27 nothing. So now, that's the distance we were talking about earlier, Louis in terms of where Lawndale should have established some breathing room for themselves. They now have it because right now they've got a 27 point lead with 111 left here in the first half. And if you're Coach Henderson, Derwin Henderson, oh, excuse me, at Morningside, at this point, man, you're just saying, let us get out of here and get to the locker room before any further damage is inflicted. Kick is away, high end over end. Caught it about the 10 yard line. And Hill has it. Hill trying to get up towards midfield, still on his feet. Wow. And the ball comes out. And that's exactly, that's exactly what I was just saying, Lou. Exactly. And it's Londale ball. On the recovery for Londale. That's Justin Agers. How about that? He's been all over the place on defense. Gonna see on nice the replay kick. here. Return man with it. That's Hill, who we've talked about so much with all the speed. Wow. Number 43 there. And, and you see the, the ball come loose. I mean, that's a clean fumble. Justin Wallace. Shaw gets hit in the backfield. Crowd not happy with the play call, <laughs> with the conservative play calling of Coach Rick Matheson. <laughs> they, want, they want it. Right. They want it now. And, you know, to some extent, I think Ouch. they're right. I mean, you know, you put as many points up as you can. And this is the, the defensive specialist. Sione Sofili loses a yard and oh, offside. So, false start, five yards. So, it'll go back to 
Lawndale territory to their own 47 yard line, 48 yard line. Got it, and 15, we got 15 seconds left to go, clock rolling. Murray, back to pass. Good protection, and also, is it uh, an interception? Well, we're waiting to see. No call yet. The ball was picked up off the ground by Johnny Lopez. So let's see, the officials are conferring right in front of us. It is an interception by Johnny Lopez. Well, let's see if we've got that one on replay. Okay. See, the officials certainly don't have the benefit of instant replay, so we get to see, we'll... Uh, can't really see it well, from that angle, no, but well, you never that's know. What's called Inconclusive evidence. <laughs> All right, not enough to overturn the play, so it stands as an interception. I mean, don't sway the guys, even NBC, ESPN, the NFL Network, they don't always get the angle. Who? <laughs> Never heard of those guys. Yeah, we yeah. can't see okay. it. Okay, can't see Good it either. Good job by the defender. Anthony Gray was there the too, yep. And there's McGuire. McGuire. Gets wrapped up and thrown down. A good tackle, open field tackle by Darius Flowers. And that's going to do it for the first half of play. Lawndale completely dominating, but the Monarchs are very giving guests here at Cardinal Stadium with a 27 to nothing lead. And let's go down to Sebastian. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Lawndale, they took complete control of that game in the first half. I was over on the sideline with the Morningside Monarchs, and Coach Henderson basically gathered his offense and just told him, hey, if you guys want to be great, start off by making a great play. He was talking to his running back especially, talking to his quarterback, and talking to his wide receivers. He wants them to get going. We'll see can they do it in the, we'll see, can they do it in the second half. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Sebastian. We'll try to add up some numbers for you and have the third quarter action coming up. And we'll be back after this on City TV. Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and you're losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper. Good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard. And you can do anything you put your mind to. Look at that halftime score, Rufus. 27 to nothing, the Cardinals pecking away at the Monarchs. And all of the scoring have come off of turnovers, either whether it be a 60-yard uh, fumble recovery returned by Darius Flowers, a fumble recovery by two of I led to a two-yard run by Richard Fitzgerald, and a Shaw with a one-yard run after a blocked punt, and then after a, a net yardage of eight yards on a punt, Ward ran for a one-yard run as well. So the penalties and the turnovers have really, really hurt the Monarchs. They, they've hurt them badly, quite frankly, to the tune of 27 and nothing on a output, scoring output by Lawndale that could be much worse right. uh, for Morningside than what it is. We're sitting there looking at 27 points. It's not inconceivable, Luke, quite frankly, if you dropped another 14 in, that this game would be 41 to nothing at this point. Uh, and for at a the while, at very least, it could, yeah. should be uh, uh, should be 35 nothing. 35 to nothing, right? And and the point is, for a long while, it was only 13 nothing. In fact, through the first quarter, and not until the five minute mark in the second quarter, did Londell actually put up more points and eventually ended up putting 14 points on the board in the last five and a half minutes of the second quarter. 
So for a good portion of the game, even though Morningside was down, they were within a play, and a couple of times we thought they were going to make that play That's right. and make it a ball game. But, hey, if you're a Lawndale Cardinal fan, you got to like what you see. You know, you look at stats before the game. One thing I can say is that, and, and, and I did a stat review for both teams, Lawndale stats don't lie. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they, they come as advertised. They are a pretty good team. We know Monarch has some good players. Their coach believes in the future. He thinks they're going to be competitive this year. But as I mentioned uh, in the first half, he's saying to his players and his team, give us a couple of years and we will be a championship ball club. And, of course, that's because this is Henderson's first year here at Morningside. In fact, the entire coaching crew, this is their first year here. That's right. Uh, Jose Azanon about ready to tee up his first kick. Austin Manigo back to receive the kick and an unusual formation being shown by the Monarchs. Monarchs led by Williams in rushing, 11 carries for 59 yards, passing for McGuire, three out of 12 for 63 yards. And an onside kick. Oh! Wow, is the ball loose? The ball was loose, let's see who it's recovered by. And it's recovered by Gary Hill. Wow. On a big hit. That was one of the more interesting onside kick attempts that you'll see, Luke. Let's watch this one unfold. There's the fake the other way. Ball's up, it's, contact is made by an, uh, by a Cardinal. So now timeout right away wow. by the Monarchs. Let's take a look at that again if we can. Okay. As well as, okay, so Monarch. So there goals. we see it again is with by Jonathan Hill and then Jose Azanon and then Richard Rivera was there I believe that was Bryant Perkinson who was really smacked by the Monarch kick returner. And a double, is, are we going to go down to Sebastian? Let's go to Sebastian. I talked to Coach Matheson coming out of the locker room. I said, what did you tell your guys in there? He said, basically, we're going to just keep doing the same thing that we've been doing. Our guys are really pumped up, and they've never been up or had a four touchdown league on any team like this. So they're basically just soaking it up right now. They're gonna keep doing what they're doing and try to capitalize on the other team's mistakes. Well, Back they just guys. got soaked with a wake up call and a bad snap on McGuire, but he gets free, still on his feet, finally wrapped up and straightened up by Bryant Salguera. And lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage was McGuire. Made a little something out of nothing, Luke, because he definitely was, as you say, lucky to get back to the line. There you see it right there is making the initial tackle, Bo Estaya. Williams in the backfield with McGuire. No, and it's just become obvious to me, and, and I'll talk with some of my officiating buddies, but clearly you can short hop that uh, snap to the quarterback because I mean, that's been in plain view that that ball has, has made contact with the ground a couple of times the night before the uh, quarterback picked it up. So third down and eight, Rufus, from the 47-yard line. That might be the shortest third down that Morningside's had tonight. <laughs> McGuire passes, has a man open, and that's complete to Deshaun Williams. Wow, Williams may have bowled himself to the first down. The initial contact, Lou actually had him two or three yards short of the first down. And Williams ain't no big guy, okay? Or if that was, was that Williams or Hill on the, on the reception? That might have been number three. I thought it was number five, but uh, looks like it was number three, so it was Hill. Well, even Hill's not a big guy. No. He's listed at six feet, 175. I don't think either one of those is the truth, but. <laughs> Well, at any rate, that's a 10-yard gain and a first down. 
So we have a flag in the air, and this one is just thrown away. So let's see what the, the penalty is all about. Now the officials are getting their exercise too, throwing the flags up in the air. So if it's against the Monarchs, it'll be second down and long. Or first down and long, we'll just see. We'll have to wait and see. No penalty or what? Nope, now you got illegal procedure on the Monarchs. And it looks like the Cardinals want to take the down instead of the yardage. Okay, so, so they'll take the down. So didn't see where the movement was. Well, actually, there's Hill right there with the with the catch, and yeah, he got away from Lambert and Alexander to get that first down. So good play by Hill. So that penalty gets erased, even though it occurred because they declined it. So second down, McGuire on the pitch to Williams. Williams turns the corner, but a good shoestring tackle by the Cardinals. And that was Bryant Salguera. That's gonna make it about a third six, let's call it. Is that at the 36 yard line? Yep. So a two yard gain for Williams. We'll call it third and seven. 9.45 left to go in the third quarter. McGuire back to pass, throws it over the middle. That's intercepted by the Cardinals. Back they come. Here comes Manigo. Marcus Manigo down the right sideline. Down to the 20. Down to the 10. And cut from behind inside the 10 yard line. Austin Manigo with the big play for the Cardinals. We're gonna call that, what, at about the 25 yard yeah. line? At about the 25, maybe the replay will let us tie down a little bit better. But so that would be about a 70 yard return. See if we get a bead on in here. That's at the 21 yard line. So that's 30 to midfield, and they take it down almost to the 10, which would be 40. Call it about down a 68 the yard. Yeah, about a 68 yard return. So Evans gets the handoff. His first run of the second half, and gets down to the six. So five yards on the play. And coming into the half, Shaw had, excuse me, Shaw, 53 yards on 14 carries and a touchdown. Murray trying to get out of the reach as everybody was covered. And good defense by the Monarchs, Deshaun Williams. Excellent defense by Deshaun Williams on that play. Open field tackle for Deshaun against the quarterback. So that goes all the way back to about the 14 yard line. Definitely the 14 inside the 15. So a loss on the play of eight. And Shaw, well that defense is really jacked up for the Monarchs. Well, it is, but you know, that defense has also had a lot of work tonight. And just as we saw in the first half when they started to wear down, here the second half starts with them. So two under yard, pressure again. Two yards for shots, fourth down and 11, or call it 12. Still can get a first down and get four downs. And that was a definite offside as Manigo with the uh, false start. So 
So that'll be fourth down. It was fourth and 12, so that'll be fourth and 17. So a timeout for the Cardinals. Okay, so each team has used one timeout, one of their three allotted timeouts here in the second half. So Lawndale has to get to the two yard line. Just trying to see exactly where that ball is marked. Looks like it's at the 20 yard line. So we'll call it fourth and 18. Right. Shaw with Murray in the backfield. And there it goes, Manigo again. So Manigo with two false starts. And that's not helping Lawndale's cause. So, so Lawndale that goes back to the 20. Penalties here in the quarter. Back to the 25. So now, do we have it on the other side? Would that be Johnny Rivera? <laughs> wow, I've never seen wow. that. Wow, that's three consecutive. So back to the 30 yard line, Rufus, and they have to get to the two. Hmm. So it's fourth and 28. Yeah. Coach Matheson. Clapping encouragement and flashing signs. And they're still going to go for it. Back to pass is Murray. Swings it over and just dumps it to Shaw. And now you got a flag on the plate. The that's question gonna be is, is that going to be a rough in the passer? Or is that going to be a... Um, an intentional grounding? Intentional grounding. Well, Evans was there. Yeah, and well, that's what I saw, so I can't... Yeah. Wow. the passer. So that's an automatic first down. That's an automatic blow. Okay, so that's going to be I'm gonna call plus that. 15 to the 15. And I'm going to call. Now, here's the replay. So let's see if we can see the blow to the head. There's our friend number 70. Okay. Don't see it in that camera angle. Hamaj Ferguson with his forearm in the air. Okay. And that has to be awfully frustrating, though, for a coach. And the number of penalties these guys have had tonight, that's their fifth tinked penalty. Hand off to DeAndre Shaw. Shaw almost got out of the tackle of the defensive specialist, Sofili, but couldn't do it. But does just get back to the line of scrimmage, Rufus, and uh, maybe a two-yard gain. And here's the impact of that particular penalty as we see the replay here. DeAndre Shaw cutting it back inside. Defender there making contact, holding him up long enough to, um, to, for, to get him down. Rivera and Ramirez, two of the three receivers to the left. Back, swing pass in and out of the hands of Manigo. But on that last drive, the point I was about to make, Lou, was a fourth and 28. Ball at the 30, needing to get to the two. Pretty much you're going to take, you would assume you're going to take over on downs. You got to think positive if you're morning side and you give it all away with a personal foul, automatic first down penalty. And now it's third down and eight for the Cardinals. Pass into the end zone, caught, and that is That's a, a touchdown. And you're going to have an injured Monarch on the field. Uh, that's Manigo with the touchdown play. You got an injured Monarch who was hit by his own teammate. And let's hope he's going to be okay. So Marcus Manigo also getting up. Here's the replay, Rufus. Oh, that was number 12. That got hit, Aaron Berry. 
And let's hope he's okay. So Manigo, there you see it right there. Well, that was Barry that got hit. Now, I don't know the, who did the hit. Can we see that one more time, guys? 650, TV pass, okay. Pass over. That's Barry, I can't see the... Yeah, we uh, can't see. Who that was? Yet. Okay, it's 12 that gets hit. Ah, okay. But I don't see who who did the hit. I don't know. Can't see if there's a number 12. Well, we're gonna take see one more look at it. if we stay through angle. it all the way through. Yeah, see, lowers his head there. Now, if we see when he gets up, okay, it's number that, six. Appears to be number six. And let's see if that's a six. That looks like Johnny Lopez. But it was One number their, 12 who got hit, Aaron Barry. It looks look like he got there. the wind knocked out of him. Just want to see over on the sideline if we see a 6 or a 12. Yeah, let's hope everybody's okay. No. That's the most important part. It's 33 to nothing, though. And uh, why don't we take a timeout on City TV? Aaron Berry, the sophomore defensive back for the Monarchs of Morningside High School, being loaded up into the ambulance after he was inadvertently hit by his own teammate, Johnny Lopez, a 5'10, 170 pound senior. And uh, this is what we saw moments ago as uh, one of our production people, Louis, told us that uh, Aaron was conscious and uh, obviously emotional. One of the trainers keeping him, telling him to stay motionless because you just don't know about a concussion or a spinal injury these days. They're so careful about that, Rufus. And uh, there he was being loaded up onto the gurney. And... Uh, a special moment as everybody cheered as he got up on the gurney and Johnny Lopez just out of the shot. is right, There's Johnny Lopez right there on the right side of your screen. And everything that they did, Lou, was according to, or at least to the best of our understanding, uh, protoc uh, the protocols required for this type of situation. So uh, it would appear to be good attention paid to him by the uh, trainers from both schools. Our sideline reporter Sebastian Spencer was over on the Inglewood sideline. Sebastian? Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I'm down here on the field. If things couldn't get any worse from one inside, like the PA announcer said, that player down was number 12, Aaron Barry. I went over there and tried to talk to one of the trainers, but it seems that they were still attending to him. He, he barely was even talking, barely was even talking, making barely any, any kind of movements. So they were still working on him, wasn't able to get too much of an update, but he does have a concussion, and they're carrying him off the field right now, as you can see. And our thoughts and condolences go out to everybody on his team, his family, and everything. So back to you guys. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, we're not medical professionals, so we can't say for sure, certain uh, what any diagnosis is. Uh, so uh, although he may have suffered a concussion, we cannot say definitively if he does or not. So I just want to add that correction in there. Uh, there. But we can't say he was still conscious and still breathing to some extent, so condolences aren't necessary right. at this point. That's right. We <laughs> have, right. We've got a double yeah. confirmation on that. <laughs> right. So, so we have another player on the ground as well. Is that, uh, now who is that? Was that Johnny Lopez? Johnny Lopez is now on the ground as well, right next to the ambulance. Johnny Lopez was the person who hit uh, Aaron Barry. And, and, and we may be approaching the point, Lou, where the best interest of everybody involved at this point would be to perhaps call the game. It doesn't mean uh, anything but a win or a loss in the record book. It doesn't mean anything in the standings. Exactly. And let's uh, look at the replay. Now, I want to caution you. It's, it's uh, graphic. Manigo with the catch for the touchdown. 
Barry is right there behind him. Here comes Johnny Lopez. And the helmet of Lopez goes right under the chin of Barry. And it appears that Barry is unconscious at that point. And Johnny Lopez got up right away. As a matter of fact, we saw Lopez right. with his teammates. And right. now maybe, yeah. As I, I don't know here. what, what yeah. happened. So now. We don't know what the result was because for the longest while, I mean, let's be clear, Lopez was, was conscious. I mean, well, beyond conscious. I mean, he was alert and simply standing there on the field. And concerned now, about his teammate. And, and at this point, we don't know whether, and we see him sitting up, so. That's a good sign. I, I, my guess at this point is that he's he's been overcome with grief and sadness, um, in in part at, at what has happened. Um, Both very fine players. We've called Lopez's number quite a bit tonight, and uh, that's just a shame. Yeah. But Lopez, as we as we've just seen him move uh, under his own power. I mean. Well, he'll get loaded up right next to his buddy, right. Aaron Barry, in the ambulance. So yeah, yeah, he may have just been overcome with emotion. Maybe his mother there wiping his brow. So now Johnny Lopez getting into the ambulance as well. Well, it's now, my uh, guess is, if you will, I, I think that the officials will, will will ask both coaches what their desire is. Now it looks like both teams are, are warming up; they may go back to playing. Um, it's been a stressful situation, but my guess is that they'll ask the coaches what they'd like to do at this point. Well, you have the principal and the assistant principal of Lawndale High School out there. And uh, the Cardinals are stretching to try to stay warm. Now the Monarchs are doing the same. Which is the whole point, which is something else that contributes to even further injuries. Because right. now the players it's are, been about are a no half hour. warmed up. Yeah, at least, at least a half hour. And, and I wish we had a clock on it. My guess is we're probably closer to 45 minutes at this point. I, well, yeah, I want to say, well, when we looked at our, our clock, it was 9 p.m. and we had uh, guess that it was about 10 minutes before that. So 9:50 okay. is what, or 8:50 is what I'm guessing. It's so that'd be, 9:20 that'd be now. About 30 minutes. And as the officials on the field and the school officials decide what is going to happen with this game, why don't we take a timeout? We see Ben Wardup, the vice principal, and uh, Rich Matheson the head coach talking about it. So why don't we take a timeout as the Cardinals lead 33 to nothing on City TV. Believe it or not, this is the extra point attempt. We going? Okay, so the extra point attempt they're going for a two-point conversion, and it is good. That's the Fitzgerald, I believe, number That's 48. David Toivai with Toivai, the two-point conversion. Right. Okay. So that makes it 35 to nothing. And that is secondary to what's been going on. So according to one of the security guards here who is right at the ambulance, at least two concussions, but again, she's not a medical professional either. So that would include uh, Johnny Lopez as well as number 12, Aaron Barry, of the Monarchs going to the hospital to get checked out. And 35 to nothing at the 6.50 mark. And there's The kickoff, the kick is recovered by Jordan Payne. And we have another penalty flag right off the bat. That's what one flag is throwing in from the side, Judge. So 
So both coaches deciding to keep the game going. After a very unfortunate scene of events in a 35 to nothing game. The illegal use of hands and that's on the Monarchs. So it'll be first and 10. We'll find out where the ball is going to be spotted with 6.42 left to go in the third quarter. So we call it the 14-yard line, 15-yard line we'll call it for Morningside. McGuire has Kristen Williams to his left. Pass to the left side and it's caught. Caught by Hill, tackled immediately by Ryan Alexander, but not before a short gain. Actually about a nine yard gain, it'll be second and one. McGuire having some difficulty handling the snap, but gains control and passes out in the flat to Hill. Like you said, nice completion, makes it second and one. Call it a six yard gain to the 21. Williams gets some open field running, gets spun around by Lambert, breaks the tackle, has a couple of Cardinals to beat, and Coleman finally tackles him deep inside of Cardinal territory, their deepest field position of the night, but a flag at midfield. A flag at midfield, boy, that's an interesting, the play was completely on the other side of the field. Got to be curious about what, what that one is. <laughs> um, okay, sideline infraction. So we saw that really no yard is knocked off on that, or is there? So at any rate, well, the ball was at the 29 outs at the, so it was on the Monarch sideline then. No, it was over here on this side. This guy threw it, but I'm going to, oh, I see. The ball right came the back though, field. but he called it this way. So we're at the 36 yard line. 36 yard line. Pass is complete to Hart and tackled immediately by Coleman. So no gain. Spread offense, not a whole lot of time to get down to Sebastian, but we will get to him as soon as we can. I'm sure he has another update on Johnny Lopez and Aaron Barry. Play action, good rush by the Cardinals that time, Rufus. David Tuavai in there, also Emmanuel Ayo to force the throw, and let's go down to Sebastian. As I was back over on the morning side sideline, and it turns out that that player that Aaron Barry collided with, number six, Johnny Lopez, was feeling sleepy on the sideline, and he felt like he was going to pass out. So they took him in the ambulance, too, in the paramedics. It seems like he was having symptoms of a concussion as well, so they took him as well. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sebastian. And the handoff goes to Williams. Williams gets some good yardage. and gets to the 41 yard line. So a gain of seven yards. And right now what you are witnessing on, on both sides of the field is some apparent indifference to what's happening on the field. And, and, and that's in homage to uh, the two injured players, the one uh, player who seemed to be much more severely injured than the other, that's Barry versus uh, Lopez, and right now, you know, the, the fans seem to be going through the motions, and to some extent, the players seem to be going through the motions, Lou, to get this one wrapped up and done with. Absolutely, uh, 4.15 left to go in this one, as you saw McGuire on the option play keep that. 4.15 in the third, we still got On the got third, it. okay. Right. Did I say fourth? Well, you say it in this one. 
on this one in this quarter. Oh, okay. Good recovery. Uh -oh. <laughs> Snap rolled to Christian Williams, and Io has had an eye on the ball. All night long. So this one goes all the way back to the 34-yard line. So a loss on the play of nine yards. And that goes uh, all the way back, second and 15 now, Rufus. Two receivers on either side of McGuire. Looking over the middle, pass, it's caught. Away from a tackle is Charles Acano, and he bulls his way down inside the 10-yard line to the nine. First and 10, first and goal for the Monarchs. And somehow another Gary Hill ended up with the ball. <laughs> Was it a fumble? I don't know, but we'll watch this play. Hill's gonna end up with it. There's contact. Acano breaks that contact. Yep, the, ball the ball does come loose. loose. Now, I think they'll probably rule, rule that he was down, but it's first and goal. So the Monarchs with their first real scoring opportunity of the night. And it's touchdown. Called a touchdown. Nine-yard touchdown. That's, that's by to Gary, Gary Hill. Hill. On the play action. So 2.46 left to go in the third quarter. And the Monarchs get on the board. So I'd imagine that they're gonna go for two. And Kristen Williams is holding his arms out like, let's get the play, coach. Ugh. Well, let's see, did they get it off in time? I don't think I they don't did. I don't think there. so. Well, it was illegal procedure, just about the same difference, and certainly consequences are the same. Each team has used one timeout here in the second half, so they both have two remaining timeouts, two for Morningside, two for Lawndale. Well, this one's from the memory books only to the fact that uh, there's been a lot of turnovers, a lot of action, and unfortunately, a couple of injuries. But other than that, this isn't one you'd want to keep in the scrapbook. No. Nope. Unless you're a Cardinal fan, of course. Pass caught by Hart into the end zone for the two-point conversion, but let's see it could be pass interference on Coleman. And if it is, I'm sure that the penalty will be declined. Pass interference on. Pass interference on the offense. So the PAT is no good. So it's 35 to 6. So a nine play drive, Rufus, that took four minutes. And 85 yards. So a good drive put together by the Monarchs. But they still have a long way to go as the Cardinals have flown out to a 35 to six lead. And would you anticipate the good hands team up front for the Cardinals? I think you should, and, they, and that's where they are, they have two guys deep, but they've got nine up in the box, if you will. So we'll see what type of formation Coach Henderson puts for the special teams.
Well, we saw him run, uh, execute a, a beautiful onside kick to start the second half. And then the Cardinals intercepted that. Manigo intercepted that, and then Manigo scored the touchdown. Now we so. got a timeout being called by uh, Morningside. We'll see the official give, we'll see the referee give the indication, but they clearly called the timeout. So let's go back, way back <laughs> on the game clock less than 10 minutes ago, eight minutes and 15 seconds, nine minutes and 15 seconds ago, there was an onside kick that was recovered by Gary Hill. Then from the 49 yard line, the pass was, inter a pass was intercepted by Manigo at the 11 yard line. And then the Cardinals went 89 yards to the end zone to make it 35 to nothing with the two point conversion good. And now the Monarchs have answered with an 85 yard drive of their own. Now they kick the ball away and that goes over the head of Banigo and if he doesn't touch it, it'll be a touchback. Bring it out to the 20 yard line. So Manigo lets that one go, and it'll be first and 10 for Lawndale, who have a big 29-point lead. And An unusual luxury. An unusual luxury, certainly of this size, and certainly in forever since we've seen them have a 35 to nothing lead. Murray hands the ball off. And I believe that was that was Shaw with Fitzgerald in the background. And it'll be second down and ten. Fitzgerald, but we have some whistles and flags. So either somebody moved or somebody was offside. They're going to repeat second down. So an infraction, five yards against Lawndale. It'll be second and 15. Didn't see what the infraction was, but at any rate, it was against Lawndale. Murray hands the ball straight off. I believe that was to Fitzgerald. And. I mean, good call. It was Fitzgerald on the carry, but there were four Monarchs there. Led by number 62, Jose Mejia, a 6'1 sophomore, 215 pounds. Also in there, number eight, Ty Hines. Eight, nine, and of course, Sione Sofili, whom they say is by far their best defender. And he's the leader on defense and one of the best linebackers, uh, they say, in, in, in the entire southern section. Well, he's, uh, there's another penalty flag on this side of the field. Offside against the Monarchs, so it'll be third down and 10. From the 20 yard line. So coach Benny Porter was telling us that so Feely's being Recruited by Pac-10 teams, also BYU. Murray, flushed out of the pocket, tries to get to the 30-yard line, made his slide a little bit too soon. Let's see where they spot the ball. It's going to be at the, about the 29-yard line, so it'll be fourth and one. Fourth, yeah, fourth and one for certain, and decision-making time for Coach Matheson. I think he'll probably kick this one away. Yep. Nope. No indication there. Now we have another penalty flag. That was a quick one. And wow. And that's against 
the Monarchs and don't know what that was. But whatever it was, it's a first down. Well, again, it's another one of... Is it the sideline the, violation? The, the, the sideline infractions. Wow, and that's, that's another, Lou, what I call a 1A file. Uh, penalty meaning it results in a, in a first down. And it's caught over the middle, down towards the end zone, to the 10, to the five, touchdown Londale. A quick pass to the right side, Austin Matigo with a touchdown. 66 yards on the score from Murray to Manigo, and it's 41 to six with 31.4 seconds left in the third quarter. That was a quick strike, Rufus. A quick one. And the Monarchs were tripping over each other, and that's what's kind of, what kind of night it's been for them. Fitzgerald out of the hold of Murray. Giving the kicker some practice. That one's up and good. There's a but there's a flag on the field. And Matheson puts his head on his head and does a little dance along the sideline. Not a happy dance. Right. So we'll see what the call is. Offside on, well. Well, hold on, they're, they're asking them to come back. I think there was a miscommunication about the call. So the teams had walked off and Frank Obregon had no players. Right. Well, that was because Lawndale was preparing to kick off. Now what this would suggest, I'm not sure, Okay, well, I mean, they could have took the result of the play and the extra point, one would assume, but they've been asked to come back on the field. Well, okay, maybe the so whistle blew because get, before yeah, the get, play well, started. Right. So Chris Murray feels the hold very, or the snap very nicely and gets it up for Richard Fitzgerald as Chris Guzman, the center, snapped it a little bit low, but still got the job done. So with 31.4 seconds left in the third quarter, 42 to six in favor of Lawndale. And even with that, Rick Matheson, still not a happy guy. And that was four plays with all those penalties in there, Rufus. Right. And there's still 31.4 seconds left here in the third. 80 yard drive. And that took two minutes and 15 seconds. And still on his feet is the Monarchs ball carrier. And out of bounds on the far sideline where it'll be first and 10 for the Monarchs at that point. From the 30 yard line, we'll call it. Carrying the ball was Darian Bryant. Darian, a 5'10 junior. <laughs> 24 seconds left here in the third, first and 10 for the Monarchs. McGuire gets the snap, throws to the far sideline, is complete, and good defense by Lambert, giving but not, bending but not breaking on that Rufus, as the ball was caught by Jaquan Johnson. Gets it up for about a four yard gain. McGuire 
Hands the ball off right up the middle. Williams looks like he got enough for the first down. And that does move the chains up to the 42. Or is that the 43? We'll call it the 43. What should be the final play, this one coming up, of the third quarter. Handoff again by uh, to Williams. And Williams gets to about the 48-yard line, and that'll end the third quarter of play. 42-6, to six. there's the score right there. Cardinals flying high tonight over the Monarchs. So five more yards for Kristen Williams, who's had an up and down game. Right. So what do you think about the Lawndale Cardinals performance despite getting a bunch of gifts tonight? What do I think about Lawndale's performance? Is that what you asked me? What do I think about Lawndale's performance? That's right, Tommy Lasorda. <laughs> <laughs> what was? What do you think of Kingman's performance? Actually, the the I've been impressed, and 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 I gotta say that it'll be interesting when they get to league play. Speaking of, I mean, let's kind of talk about for a moment the Lawndale schedule, the rest of the way. They've got Losinger uh, in a couple next week, actually. And we'll be there. And we'll be there on the Lawndale. Meanwhile, Broadcast Network. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Williams trying to find some running room, but Isaiah Torres ran him down from behind. And guess who is there with him? Emmanuel Ios. Watch this hit there. And I believe that was our old buddy David Tuivai who laid a lick on McGuire. So this one's a loss of two. Back to the 46. Back to pass as McGuire flushed out of the pocket. Good coverage by the Cardinals as well. McGuire on the move, spun around. Finally wrapped up by Io as he was spun around by Ryan Alexander. You, you took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Ryan Alexander was the one who slowed him down considerably which gave the opportunity for um, the secondary defender to get in and bring him down. There's the spin by Ryan. And that was Emmanuel Io and Alexander also there as well. So now it's fourth down after the loss of one, all that running around by McGuire, and he loses a yard. <laughs> So it's fourth, and we'll call it six. McGuire back to pass, three-man rush. Pass out in the flat is complete to Hart. Hart trying to go around, and uh, looks like he might have enough for the first down. And surprise, no horse collar tackle, or certainly attempted horse collar being called there against the Hawthorne defender, uh, number six, Darius Flowers. So some nice blocking up front on that wide receiver screen, and that is going to be a turnover. And just as I was about to get the big man for Morton's has some credit. I mean, he looked real Look good. That, that big real old close. lineman. Sorry about that, Rufus. No, no on, on, on his uh, pursuit of the play, that was Ferguson, a senior, 6'3", 260. So a turnover on downs with 9.32 left in the fourth quarter at the 47-yard line for the Cardinals. And DeAndre Shaw gets up to midfield. So a three-yard gain for DeAndre. And I got a notion that DeAndre Shaw is going to get a steady diet of the football and, in fact, the entire rushing core 
for the uh, Cardinals at this point because that's how you, you know, run the clock out. Long way to run, though. We're just under nine minutes left here. Second down and seven, and a fresh set of legs. And that is Perkinson, B.J. Perkinson, with those fresh legs, gets down to the 45-yard line. Perkinson and now we have another flag up in there. That's got to be some sort of a personal foul. Somebody trash talking. Perkinson, I was about to mention, had four catches last week for 77 yards. So he's he's a reliable receiver for uh, for the quarterback. For Chris Murray, had a good game. I wonder who Obergon is talking to because nobody can hear it. Well, he likes to talk. He likes to yeah. hear himself talk. I mean, oh, he's, he's about he the was only talking person to who's himself. hearing that. I mean, well, he no, I can hear. He's so loud, I can hear him up here. There you see BJ, and a good open field tackle. So I'll call it the 44-yard line. Where it'll be second down and a short two. Shaw gets to the 40-yard line. That'll move the chains. We'll get at the 39-yard line, Rufus, and a good run by a good, tough running back, which is the norm here. Absolutely. I mean, we saw the years of Michael Watkins, uh, who was an excellent running back here, and a couple of others even uh, before then. But Watkins certainly had a good career here. He's gra since graduated and moved on. And I'm sure we're going to get some false start action here by Londa. So it'll be first and 15 back to the, four, uh, the 44. So late game offense, a running back behind Chris Murray as well as to the side of him. And that's Perkinson. B.J. gets almost gets that five yards back, but the Monarchs' defense saying, uh-uh, we're not going to give you that back. But about a three-yard gain for Perkinson. So a two-yard gain for B.J. from the 43-yard line. It's second down at about 13. Now Shaw gets back to the original line of scrimmage about the, well, close to it anyway, the 40-yard line. And all of this running, as I mentioned, uh, keeps the clock rolling, which is in the interest of everybody now. And well, the only thing we have to fear is that Sebastian is by himself, sideline reporting, and, and he, he may go for the record tonight <laughs> for the most number of post-game interviews. Well, he, he, there's a lot to talk about tonight. And now a bootleg on there by Chris Murray, and suddenly my English <laughs> fell off the truck. <laughs> and down inside the 35 yard line. And that's not gonna be a first down, but it'll be fourth down and short. Good defense by Jamar Hart on the open field tackle. So it'll be fourth and two. And the clock continues to run with under 430 left here, 42-6 contest in favor of the home stand in Lawndale Card. Seven yard gain for Murray on fourth and two now. Shaw with it and Shaw gets run over by Sione 
Sofili. And that's turned over on downs. Like Rufus said, right up there, one of the best in the South Bay. You will see him playing on Saturdays next year. 6'1", 220 pounds. 340, clock running. So that was a six minute exchange by the Cardinals chewing up clock time from the 34 yard line for the Monarchs. Williams looking for some running room gets turned backwards still with some forward progress and gets it up to the 45. And that's gonna be good enough for a first down Rufus. Good enough for a first down and uh, I'm not sure what the mercy rule, if there is one in effect right now. I know that there is a mercy rule in well, the clock is, now. Yeah, the clock's but, been rolling. Yeah. We don't know whether it's a, what, a 35 point lead or something? I believe so. So we would be with, in that yep. window, outside of that window, I should say. Or either this fish aiding crew has decided I don't care what you say. We're, we're, this clock's going to run, and we're all getting out of here before 10 o'clock. And they got about three minutes to make it. <laughs> but there's only two and a half on, on the game clock, so we may come within 30. About the narrowest of margins with about 30 seconds to spare. McGuire is sacked by Tuivai and Io. They have been a tandem on defense to reckon with. And even though there's still three timeouts total remaining, Morningside has one, Lawndale has two. Both coaches are wisely not calling any timeouts as we're now under two minutes to go here in the contest. About six yards lost on the play, Rufus. And the defense is boxed in. But Williams trying to burst through it. Wow. One man to beat. And let's see if they can catch him. And just barely catching him from behind is B.J. Perkinson, probably the only man fast enough to catch him. With 1.25, and clock is still rolling. So that's going to be a first down, Rufus, from the 45-yard line of the Monarchs. Good run by Williams, as you see there in Ward number 31. Yeah, the guys guy with really the chains good. aren't in a big hurry. Gonna call it at the five. Bad snap, picked up by McGuire and is drugged down by Tuavai. Boy, Tuavai, he's, he's put his name in that running for player of the game tonight. As you'll see on the replay here. That's a grip. Seven yard loss. And he's definitely in the running for the coveted tip of the head award. Oh, at the very least. McGuire towards the end zone and just too far out of the reach of Jamar Hart. Clock still running on the incompletion so we know that the mercy rule is in effect now. Let's see if they even bother to line up. I don't know if this guy's gonna be able to get back in position before this one's over. Folks, that's Two, the ball game. One, and that is gonna do it. The Lawndale Cardinals shock the Morningside Monarchs, who are ranked at least twice as high in the state standings as the Lawndale Cardinals, a stunning 42-6 victory for Lawndale. Absolutely stunning. For a game that we really thought was going to be a lot closer, this game for all intents and purposes was certainly over at the half when it was 27-0. And quite frankly, if Londell had capitalized on their opportunities in the first quarter, it would have been over in the first quarter. That's true. As in the first quarter, there were turnovers right away that led to a 13-0 lead for the Cardinals and Chris Brownlee. I'm sure Chris Brownlee will take some credit for the win too, right? 
No, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we add up some unofficial stats and get some people round up for our post game, why don't we take a timeout on City TV? Back at Lawndale High School, 42 to six, the Cardinals over the Monarchs, and Sebastian Spencer has a special guest on the field. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I'm here with Coach Matheson of the Cardinals. Coach, how do you think your guys play tonight? Uh, I think they played pretty well tonight. That defense gets uh, better and better every week. They're physical. They don't back down. They're going to go hit teams right in the mouth whenever they get a shot. And tonight we won the turnover game, and offense was able to capitalize. Still a lot of kinks to work out on the offense. I got a young quarterback, a young O-line, um, but they're starting to come around. Definitely. And do you think they corrected a lot of those mistakes from last week? Because I know one of the things you talked about was the turnovers, and you say you want you guys yeah. won that ratio with Morningside. What did you talk to them about in practice this week? Just, just focus. It's um, a lot of the turnovers had nothing to do with ability. It was just a lot of effort. You know, understanding that you can have all the athletic ability in the world, but if you don't put in the effort on the field, you're going to make mistakes like that. And just really focused on cleaning it up this week, and just getting the kids to understand it's focus and effort. Not don't always rely on what your ability is. Definitely. I know you talked about running the ball a lot today and uh, before the game. That's what you said you wanted to do, but the pass was working a little bit. Talk about Austin and what he means to your team playing wide out. Okay. That kid ever realizes his ability. He is a dangerous, dangerous receiver. And uh, luckily, he's only a junior. We got him back next year, and uh, he's going to do some damage this year. And just, uh, again, it's getting the younger quarterback settled in. It's getting, the, uh, it's getting that O-line settled in. And then really, just once those guys get going, Austin's going to be a huge piece of this offense. Definitely, and I know you talked to me after halftime saying that this team is not used to having four touchdown leads and being up by that much. So what do you tell your guys to keep them grounded and ready for next week? Just keep doing the same thing. Why, why fix something if it ain't broken? You know, we came into the game nice and relaxed, ready to play. They go in at halftime, they got a little amped up, settled them back down, don't change anything. Let's stay nice and relaxed, let's stay loose, and then just have to have another good week of practice, keeping them relaxed, keeping them learning, and just keeping them focused. Good luck to you, yeah, Coach. You. All right, good game. There you go, guys. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Sebastian Spencer, and uh, terrific job by you. And uh, I guess we want to say right now that we just want to, before we forget, our thoughts and prayers go out to not only the Morningside family, but the Aaron Berry and Johnny Lopez family as uh, they both were taken away on an ambulance after colliding head-on with each other on the Marcus Manigo's uh, touchdown catch. In the third quarter at 6 Or Austin Manigo, mark. excuse me. Right, and, uh, you know, as you say, you know, when, when, when you're a parent of a football player, it's probably the worst thing you ever want to see happen on the field. But we have reason to believe, and that's all I can say. We have every reason to believe that both players are going to recover uh, and be fine. All right, time for our player of the game and our hat uh, of the game. And uh, tell you what, Rufus, it's a tough one. A lot of uh, Cardinals flew high in this one as uh, it was DeAndre Shaw doing the bulk of the work, had 21 carries, 72 yards, and a touchdown unofficially. And uh, then there was Chris Murray, uh, the quarterback, passed for well over 100 yards, had two touchdowns and an interception. And then also Austin Manigo had a terrific game as well in the second half. but I, uh, And then also David, two of I on defense, also on defense, Emmanuel Io. But uh, I think tonight was a good coming out party for Chris Murray, who uh, ran the team very well, took the keys to the car, and uh, ran it good for head coach Rick Matheson. So he's going to be my choice for player of the game. And again, that is Chris Murray. All right. And you mentioned the two guys on defense who had uh, breakout nights. Uh, Emmanuel Io, who is a sophomore uh, defensive end, he's number seven. Of course, number 48 was David Tuavai. Tuavai is a junior. I'm going to give it to, be, being the older brother, I'm going to give it to the older brother. <laughs> that, 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 so Tuavai, David Tuavai, who did have a great game. Emmanuel Io, let me say this, your time is coming, obviously, but tonight, Let's give it to the junior, David Tuavai. He gets the tip of the hat award. All right, so David Tuavai is our tip of the hat. Our player of the game is Chris Murray. Congratulations to the Lawndale Cardinals. Now they are 2-1 and one on the season. 
And for the Morningside Monarchs, they even up their se season at 1-1. One one. Next week for the Lawndale Cardinals, they will play the Losinger Olympians. And just trying to see, that is at uh, Lou House at, at Lou Olympian House. Stadium. And we will be there. And you expect that the Olympians will be just a bit honorary. They're coming off a 61-0 defeat last night to the North Torrance Saxons. So uh, that's enough to make you mad. That's, that's true. <laughs> right? and, uh, but that should be a very good game. And, and as we talked about both in the pregame and here, man, things are really looking good. I see now why Coach Matheson was saying they expect to make the playoffs this year. All right, and uh, we will follow the Cardinals, the Olympians, and the Cougars all the way and uh, see if one of these teams can crack the playoff uh, ceiling, that's for sure. Well, for Sebastian Spencer and for Rufus Washington and the terrific City TV crew, I'm Lou Stowers telling you once again from the Cardinals' nest at Lawndale High School, the final score once again, the Lawndale Cardinals 42, the Morningside Monarch 6. Until next week, so long.